How's it going, everyone? It is Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. Let's get into the picks from the prior video. I gave two longs here, or I get a long and a short, sorry, both for day trading. I gave GPK. And let's take a look at this guy here. Go to the M5. So GPK was looking very strong while the market was selling off yesterday. Um, now the awkward part is that you'd actually have to get in while the market's moving lower. A GPK was so strong that it managed to actually climb higher during that move. Um, but we had a nice bearish engulfing candle on heavy volume. This was a huge little high volume, uh, double top over here. And we started to get lower test below VWAP. Now that was fine because we waited for a pullback, but I felt that this retracement was pretty weak or or was pretty decent, I would say. Um, we moved a good amount of distance. We had some steady selling. Um, so when this LRSI alert came up over here and we were relatively weak, the market was going up at this time, but it really felt like the market was carrying the stock up rather than the stock being relatively strong. So this ended up being uh, a no trade. I think the window was really here. There was a small window right here. Uh, to take that trade and you know that's about it so no trade on gpk i'm just going to update that in our picks all right our next one here is crowd Crowd was a very nice mover earlier in the day. Um, and, you know, when we got it over here, it was showing a little bit of relative strength. And, um, you know, I wasn't crazy about taking the short over here. I'd rather take it on some sort of bounce. So um, that is something I also ended up having a no trade on. Um, I thought the move again was earlier in the day. As you can see, when the market is going a little bit lower, crowd is really leading the way down. Nice, steady, organized price action. So I think that's the time where I would have taken uh, the short or even potentially on the failed bounce, but I wasn't crazy that it was gaining some relative strength with the market. Um, this move was nice, but I just didn't have quite the clues to take the short um, when I wanted to. You can see that the stock ended up rallying up with the market later today. Or later that day so didn't quite have the relative strength um and then by the time we got the l rsi pullbacks i wasn't crazy about what the formation over here was we had a bit of a double top we had some fighting so this didn't this didn't really feel like a chance where i could get in on this l rsi alert even if you did and you got in on the alert on this breakdown over here you could have scratched out of the trade or sorry taking the loss probably taking an average loss on the trade um, when it broke through over here. But I think this is an avoidable scenario. You have a bit of a double bottom. You have it gaining strength relative to the market. Um, it's already made a pretty big move. So, um, you know, we didn't quite see the weakness that we wanted to in terms of the price action on crowd. So two no trades on this one here. Let's take a look at our uh, picks. I'm going to monitor pins in the background here. Uh, I have a short on pins. So keep an eye on it, see if it can... Uh, hit my target here. Um, ASTS long. Right now, the trade is a little bit in profit today. Has been soaring up, getting close to this $9 level here, or 19, about 1980 ish. There is some resistance at this point, but um, I like ASTS. There's DD. Um, still holding the gains here. I want to see it make that next leg uh, potentially sometime this week and get above that new high. JMIA, it has been compressing here, not really been rallying uh, with the market. So um, I may look to take, I want to see what happens this week. I want to see kind of react to the market this week. But if there's a lot of selling pressure here, I may look to take smaller profits on this stock. So um, nothing changing here in terms of these two picks. Let's take a look at what the market has been doing. So after a week of selling, we've got a bit of a double bottom here and the market is starting to rally. 
we're guarding through the gap and we're through our AVWAP Q. Big gap up. Tech stocks and semis are leading the way up. Uh, cyclical is also very strong. Mega cap is very strong today. So very big move in the market on this next charge up. We also broke through this downward sloping trend line. So uh, shorter term, again, this is a mildly bullish move or would be a mildly bullish move with the exception that we have FOMC today. We have some mega cap tech earnings coming out today, which was meta. Also have Apple and Amazon coming out on Thursday. And we also have unemployment coming out on Friday. So a lot of things happening. Um, a lot of things coming out this week. So that's why you know this is a, this is a bullish move. But with all that context, it, we can't have a lot of predictive power into it because things could sort of change in a flip. So longer term, we're still mildly bullish. We're watching to see how this bounce does. Is it going to be a weak bounce? Is it going to be a strong bounce? Who knows? On a shorter term time frame, uh, this is technically mildly bullish, but you know contextually we are still sort of in a no man's land. So, if we look at this move here, we got this leg down, and then we we're just compressing, compressing, we we're compressing here. We broke down this compression, tested this low again, found some support, so support, 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 uh, bounced off a little bit here. Today we gapped up, tested the breakout level here, and now we are moving into that gap. So again, technically bullish on the short term. Here we see that we have a gap up, a little bit of a bid check, and then we rally a little bit higher. I believe the time to get in on that move was around 10.05, 10.10. .10. And your notion is that this move is going to stick because this is major earnings. So in that case, we are going to just ride this leg higher. Um, now we got a bit of a pullback to VWAP. We got this move up over here, some tiny body candles. So this is probably going to be a double top. And we know that FOMC is going to be later today, happening at a 2 p.m. Uh, EST or 11 p.m. PSD. So if that happens, or I guess when that happens, um, we know that the market is probably going to die later in the day. And our best chance for any sort of day trade is going to be very early in the day within the first 60 to 90 minutes. If I'm day trading on the long side, I know that this move is probably going to be exhausted. So I would need to get in on a stock very, very early. That's actually why I chose pins when I did. Um, pins was a post earning stock, so very weak. I just needed the market to stop going up and kind of die a little bit. As soon as the market started to die and going flatline, this stock started to drop lower. So lots of volume here, lots of volatility. Can't quite recommend it as my day trade short because I already took the trade, but to lay out the background of this trade on pins, um, I'll just talk about really what I saw here. Um, post earnings weakness through a whole bunch of levels, ton of volume breaking through all, all of these gaps. So we had this really big first leg lower while the market was uh, kind of flatlining here a little bit. Now I called it, I called out that 10-10 candle, right? These candles here, markets rallying fairly strong, pins compressing, holding the low of the day. And we're right at the gap fill here. Now this is where waiting comes into play. So this gap fill normally, like I would respect this gap fill, but because we have a post earnings move, we have the volume, the volatility, the institutional sellers to get through this level. So I weight that probably more than anything. And I've seen if the market is weak and the stock is weak, that is when you can break through technical levels. And that's what's happening here. So I got in here, 32.65. I added in over here. I scratched out the ad, which was a mistake, but added in over here. And now the stock has been just leaking lower while the market has been leaking higher. So we have some nice relative weakness here. I don't want to overstay my, my welcome in this move. So I have my profit target out. Or if I get a 1 OP buy signal here, I'm going to try to take profits on the trade. So um, those are kind of what I'm looking at in terms of what's happening here. But this is very heavy price action. You can see that we don't really get a lot of big pops because sellers are knocking this down. Lots of volume, very nice, tight, orderly candles. Um, very easy or far more easier to trade, in my opinion, uh, than a stock with much lower volume. Okay, so 
we talked about that. We talked about how this gap is going here. We got a nice move. We got a little bit of a pullback. This second leg higher is fairly weak. We might get a bit of a double top. I don't think we're going to sell off today. I think we're just going to be kind of dead for the rest of the day. Um, trade I'm going to take, give for today. One of my favorite earnings time spreads, WDC. We have low times exceeded, high difference, high option liquidity. Um, it's one of those trades that I've taken a couple times. It's always had these statistics. So I love uh, taking the win on this stock. There may be some uh, increase in IV, maybe because of the meta part, but WDC is a very different industry than meta. Uh, this stock does more tech hardware. Meta does a lot of different random things. So not a lot of correlation between them. So WDC time spread is going to be my pick of the day. Um, I would probably wait until after FOMC to take the time spread. There's going to be a lot of movement. Um, would not take it before FOMC because let's say we get some movement and then the stock closes maybe at 67. All right, now you're already kind of, you know, taking some heat on that earnings time spread. So wait for the FOMC, see what happens over there, and then take your time spread. Um, couple of stocks that I'll give for today that I'm liking, maybe for some day trades. First one, AVGO. We know that tech has been leading the charge lower or charge higher, sorry. Gap and go, trying to break away from that 50 SMA, getting through some of that horizontal resistance. So um, want to see a little bit more escape velocity on here, but I like what I see in AVGO. Stock is rallying, not crazy about the market. There might be a small opportunity for maybe like a quick buck um, on this guy here. I think that's pretty doable. DD is also a nice trade on the long side here. Let this guy load. Post earnings move again and getting through all these levels. This stock has been grinding higher. We're pulling back here and we're getting a bit of a launch off. Um, gaining some relative strength. So I like what I'm seeing in this stock. I'd wait for a little bit of dip and then enter that trade. Healthcare stocks are pretty weak today, but A is a standout pick. Um, I'd want it to break through the high of the day. Until I can do that, I would not take this trade. But if we can do that, then we have some nice amount of room to the close in this post earnings gap. DHR has been a nice grinder and now the stock has been compressing so you don't want to get out of the stock at this point where it's just pretty much dead in the water um but was a nice kind of gap and go uh, i guess a reversal grinder here didn't really gap up with the market but you can see how it was trending higher here um especially when other healthcare stocks were quite weak we had our eye on crowd um this stock Kind of flatlining here. You can see after um, a day of a little, day, little bit of buying here, it has been very weak today. No gap up, just compressing while the market has been rallying. Um, I'd maybe set an alert. I'm actually going to set an alert over here. If we can kind of get through this level over here. Um, I think that this could be a pretty nice shorting opportunity setting up here on this stock. You can even lean potentially on 3, 236 here. Um, and then on, on any sort of market weakness, on this double top coming up over here, we could get probably that breakdown in crowd. And I already talked about pins. Um, pins may still have some meat left on the bone. So keep an eye out for the stock. Post earnings bear is really doing what it's want, right? We've got the high volume, high volatility. It is not listening to anything that SPY is doing at the moment. So those are some stocks to keep an eye out for today if you want to uh, take your wager in day trading. I think keeping it light, I'm sticking to a lot of earning stocks. They have the volume, they have the volatility, they have the institutional involvement for me to trade them without really having to worry too much about what the market's doing. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll take a look at what the FOMC looks like tomorrow, what uh, meta earnings looks like as well. And uh, we'll let the dust settle for the remainder of this week.